All right. I don't know how they're doing it, but they're creating the, the same particles we were, apparently, shooting them through a handheld laser. And, and that's all they're using to weld with. And you should see the welds. Absolutely amazing. And different metals and everything, just the way Hutchinson was doing it. And this is nothing more than using light. Okay, when I show you this, you're going to freak out. Well, I've been showing this for a long time. Rod Warren developed a Venturi that literally separates light. Well, right in this zone right here, you have fission. So you don't have any, you don't have any atoms here. You have raw electron neutrinos and you have raw muon neutrinos. When they come back together, they fuse. This is fission, so they, they, everything just goes into nowhere land, and then it fuses back together. Well, guess what? They're using this now. It's called light weld. Where do you see this? It blew me right away. All right, check this out. This is unbelievable. Light Weld 1500, handheld portable laser welding system from the world leader in fiber lasers. Light Weld is the smallest and lightest laser welding system available is easy to learn and operate and produces consistent high quality welds. Light Weld 1500 handles thick, thin and reflective metals, different thickness combinations and even welds dissimilar metals of different electrical conductivity. Compared with traditional methods, Light Weld is up to four times faster, welds with low heat input and minimized heat affected zone without distortion, deformation, undercut or burn through. Parts require less setup and virtually no rework, increasing productivity, reducing scrap, and lowering the cost per part. The travel speed and diversity of the materials that can be welded is unbelievable. That's a fact. Built-in parameters allow operators to instantly switch between 50 stored modes with optimized settings for continuous welding on jobs with different material and thickness combinations, dramatically increasing productivity. For even more flexibility, operators create and store their customized parameters for later use. Less skilled operators recall these modes to produce the same consistent results, decreasing labor costs while preserving high quality welds. Going from stainless to aluminum, just said and done. Pretty impressive. Front panel controls for manual adjustments quickly dial in laser power from 150 to 1500 watts to best match applications. Wobble welding controls for frequency and width create wider and highly attractive seams up to 5 millimeters. Light Weld 1500 includes... Alright, this is where you, I understand the electronic activity. Copper is an extremely intense quantity of electrons in copper. And the thicker the copper, the more dense the electrons. I'm going to show you how, and, and nothing, light is nothing more than magnetic particles. So these interact with magnetic particles because they have not a, a ton of extra electrons in their region. That's why it focuses the light down in between these little divots. All right, Tesla was correct. Every single thing to do with energy is frequency and vibration. How fast is it going? And what is it hitting? How hard is the vibration? It's push to shove. That's what I call it. Now, when we come out here in these salt table experiments, they're putting salt on top of this plate, which is being vibrated, you know, by uh, an ele electronic signal. Salt is a polar molecule. It's going to react to the push and shove of that vibrating plate. And it will start out at a very low frequency. And it shows to me the pattern of hydrogen and helium, which is the lowest and only has one orbital around it. All right, and you could have a maximum of four electrons. Helium might have that. Now, then you go up into the rule of eight which is the next line on the periodic chart. You see the rule of eight. And then it gets more and more and more and more complex as you get higher and higher and higher. And all I could think of is all of those patterns, you see I'm going to go way out here, are associated to more and more particles. And they have to push and shove and they become locked in at these frequencies. At a certain point there will be so many frequencies they just fall apart. Like, like, um, 
plutonium and uranium and so forth. But they become, they're very, very stable at, at these exact frequencies. So there's a resonance frequency shaker, mover and shaker in the universe that's, that's creating these zones of stability, these periodic zones of stability. That's what that are, that they are. All right, this is Latham's Crazy Machines. Unbelievably fabulous. Incredible tractor beam magnets. Well, this is going to be the nucleus of his atom. And it's going to have positive and negative. That's the dipole nature. You watch how he does this. This is really very, very cool. And this is exactly how an atom works. All right, so you see what he did? Now he's putting that backwards in the center. So he's got a dark core and then he's got all of his electrons on the outside. So he's got a positive core and electrons on the outside. That means he's going to want to attract another electron into the center. But these electrons say, no, 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 no. You can't get in here. You just stay that far away and it's okay. But you can't get closer. We're the guys that are, are hugging up to the dark matter. Watch. He's going to take a, a, a negative now, which wants to get to the positive, which is all, boom, there it is. That's quantum mechanics right there, my friends. And that little bugger will stay there. Now I'm going to show you another resonance frequency to, to, to say why does this thing lock in at certain sizes. And it's got to do with vibration. Now, you see how tight that's held? When it escapes, it's, it's light, really. Boom, there it goes, light, electricity, whatever. As soon as that electron gets away from its holder, see it? Boom, there. Okay, my outstanding friends, bolt yourself to the floor. We're doing anti-gravity. Now, I studied this guy, Hutchinson, years and years ago. And he could do anti-gravity. And, and nobody paid any attention to him. It's just unbelievable. Now, I'm looking at this. I'm, I'm going back to show how anti-gravity works with electron flood theory and it works absolutely flawlessly now so I'm looking back for some of his early work go back to 2012 they remastered some of the original footage because he goes way back and they just didn't pay any attention to him at all look at this one comment 10 years ago one comment nobody cares about this stuff now watch this this is from American anti-gravity listen to this I haven't even watched this, but I, I remember watching all this. I can tell you exactly what he's doing. I know exactly what's going on here. And we're going to go through every little bit of it. He's got Tesla coils. He's illuminating that fluorescent tube. I did all this stuff myself, same basic stuff. Although I didn't do this. <laughs> he's doing anti-gravity. Look at that. Just force it. Compl the fluid goes out. This is anti-gravity, and, th and this is not something that can, watch this, look at it, cannonball. Metal actually just falls apart. Cannonball. Fuses metals, different, different metals together. Opens up like that, just, they just fall apart, the metals. I understand why. They just fall apart. That's watch this. Why would it just be the fluid going out? Think about this. Why wouldn't I have been that whole cup? All right. All he's doing is using resonance frequencies. When I say all he's doing, he's he's. He's done a lot of experiments, trust me. And he knows exactly the molecular activity and the frequency to make just that stuff come out of the glass. You see, did you notice that only a certain type of material goes? It's not all the materials. Look back here. Watch. Boom, that one went. I don't know what it was, but that's, it didn't go, that didn't go. And then he changed it, and the aluminum goes. 
boom, steel goes. Whatever that is, I might be copper, I have no idea. All right, now we're going to find out why this stuff happens. All right, everybody's seen this a million times. This is light accelerating. Einstein was wrong, and this is light dividing. The photon was here, it consisted of two particles. All right, the electrons have muons and electrons. The electron is the glowy, explosive white part. The muon is the black ball, goes around. A photon consists of two of these back to back. When we shot it through the Venturi, it accelerated, first of all, ripped itself right out of the magnetic field, which was the wave, and it is the particle, exploded here and divided. And basically that's what Hutchinson was doing inside of molecules. Okay, th somebody just sent me this to look at, and it's, it's from the Science Channel. And it's about Hutchinson. And uh, apparently the Japanese took some interest in his work, but virtually nobody else did except the military people. <laughs> That's what upset them. And he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, a, a humanist. He's a, a really good guy. And this is the problem with science. It's, it's, um, I found it very difficult, to be perfectly honest with you. It's a bad realm to be in if you really want truth and reality and honesty. Grace John and funded him to build his bigger crystal-based models. I got orders from Japan and sponsorship for me to make more of them. So the money would come through into my bank account and indeed I made units that are actually in Hiroshima City. While various zero-point energy devices were funded by the Japanese, so far none have taken off on a mass scale. John Hutchison is probably the very visual proponent of the whole kind of zero-point energy movement. Zero-point energy devices could revolutionize the planet. If you can build a zero-point energy reactor about the size of your microwave oven, put it in the back of your house somewhere, you run your house. You don't need to, you run all its electricity needs. You don't need to pull anything off the national grid. Well, if you put that into the third world, you're going to revolutionize the third world. That is as much a threat to some people as it is a benefit. And as far as that... That's the problem. And I have shown, using the, our laser acceleration, there shouldn't be any problem taking that energy right out of there and doing just what he said, carry it around, put it in your backyard, take it out in the woods, go pump water with it, fight, fight fires you know, clean the creeks and, you know, all kinds of things. And they're going to tell you, you we're not going to make it unless we do something like that. The Hutchison effect goes, I'm rather disturbed that the U.S. government and aerospace corporations has it. Do the concerns of it being used for an evil force by the military-industrial complex disturbs me quite a bit. I like to see it used for the helping of nature because uh, there's so much pollution going on with nature. Mankind tends to want to fight each other all the time with wars, whereas Mother Nature rolls on with great energy and power. It's absolutely essential for the world, the survival of the world, that we get off petrochemicals. Uh, failure to do so it really threatens our national survival. What I like about John is that he doesn't compromise. He doesn't compromise his appearance. He doesn't compromise his lifestyle. What he does is pretty unconventional, so, um, you know, good on him. I, I'm, I'm all for that, and uh, I wouldn't want him to change. Problem is, you don't get anywhere unless you fit in with the group that is the authorities. And once you get into that authoritarian group, you have to walk the line. I call it this way, I say, stay on the page or get off the stage. <laughs> they will not let you do the things he's doing, that's why. There's no reason they shouldn't have done this and looked into this. This is absolutely insane. The, the academic society is, is an anti-educational you know, group of, of people that want to control what you think. And it doesn't matter what you think is right or wrong as long as they're in control. That's what I found. All right, remember I told you that the, the copper surrounding the light will force into the center it's because it this is has nothing more than a ton of magnetism a magnetism is
polar molecules. And polar molecules hit this polar field and stop. <laughs> I'll show you, watch. Dave in strange ways. Bang, never hit it. Never hit it. Boof, it should have smacked right into there. Well, it's just like hitting a, a pillow of, of electrons. And this has its own pillow of electrons. They poof, they just go together. And they don't, they don't. Copper is not magnetic, so they don't exactly attract each other. Oh, but at it? the same time, this magnet doesn't seem to want to slip off very quickly. It drags across the plate slowly, like it's moving through a thick fluid. It's exactly what it is. It's, it's exactly what it is. <laughs> Perfect example. 